Thank God I got headers and <laughs> I didn't do like I did the first time. The first time I built this car, I built the whole front end just like this. And then afterwards I was basically like, okay, how do I get headers in here? And then I had to end up paying over $4,000 for a custom set of headers to go out the bottom of the car because I put so much stuff in the way. Whereas this time I have the headers ahead of time so we can make sure, sure stuff is not in the way. So such as this right here, if we were to keep this engine plate level across then it'd be right in the way of the headers. So uh, what we're gonna have to do is go off of here and then we'll probably just go through this bolt hole right here. We'll keep that angle. So we'll come up a little about right there to that point and then we'll just match that and go straight down. And then that header will, uh, it'll be able to clear all that. Now that pipe's gonna have to turn um, just a little bit and come this way, uh, but that, that should be perfectly fine. Uh, no issue at all and then we'll put our v-band out here somewhere our v-band actually won't be up in there and then to get that header out we'll be able to just come up and kick it out the back side because um, i just put it in with that bar right there in there and it slipped uh it slipped right in so that's the that's definitely one thing i learned after the first build is make sure you have your parts so you can build around your parts to save yourself money so how to build engine plates if your vehicle such as mine does not have affordable engine plates. So the engine plates, the front ones for this Coyote are all about 300 and up. I think they're 400 and up, but to be safe and make sure I don't misspoke, I'm gonna say 300 and up for simple plates on the side. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I wish I had the technology to cut just some straight uh, flat aluminum like I showed you and make my own plates and send them out. But you would need to do this on a CNC machine to mass produce them. Uh, versus just doing them yourself. So if you want to build engine plates yourself, I overthought this also and made this overcomplicated whenever I first built these. Um, I did a lot of research studying the MMR ones, how thick they were, where they were placed at and all that. And um, what I have learned from working on this stuff is they just need to be mounted to a secure mounting point. It really does not matter where they go uh, beyond what anybody can overcomplicate it uh, with. They need to be secure firm mounting points probably at least three eighths of an inch thick or half an inch thick the mmr stuff and all that appear to be half an inch thick um, a lot of what the plates use and the angles don't matter at all like it just you just got to hold them in there hold the motor in uh, from rocking side to side pretty much or wanting to turn like this uh, your engine limiter which is hanging right there i gotta remake that that limits forward and backwards all these plates do is limit you know the motor from going like this so what I do when I did mine is I looked up where a lot of them mounted at, like what mounting points were other manufacturers using. It's kind of your cheat sheet. Uh, and then you say, well, hey, if they're mounting them there, then I can mount mine there and get the same results. Um, and so that's what I simply did. Now, since then I have remade plates, like I remade this one and then threw bolted that down there because uh, I don't have the alternator or nothing. And we're going to keep probably something similar to that because of us having our mechanical fuel pump mounted off of this plate over here. But on this one, pretty simple. Uh, all we need to do is remake this top. And when I originally made these, I actually made this before I even had the motor. Um, I literally just made some plates on the table. And then again, I built the chassis to the plates completely backwards. You should be kind of doing like I'm doing now. So the first time I really jumped the gun on a bunch of stuff and messed a bunch of stuff up. But we're gonna trace this pattern over here. I just put some random uh, through marks on here, completely random. And just the luck of the draw, I ended up needing to extend both of them 4.5 inches. I have no clue how I got that precise off of guessing where uh, just random reference points, uh, but I did. We're gonna cut this one straight. So it's gonna go all the way over here to this bar. And then this one's gonna be cut straight this time and go all the way right here to this corner. I had also originally notched these because these actually sat on this rail. And I said, well, in my theory, I'll bolt these to the motor and I'll be able to sit the motor in and just sit it on the rail and then put the through bolt straight through it. Um, and that never, ever, 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 ever worked. Not one single time. What I had to do was put all four bolts in loosely where they were all loose with the jack and get everything in and then tighten it down and it pulled everything into place. Um, so this time we're not gonna overcomplicate it by sitting there trying to make little notches that sit on the tube and all that crap. We're just gonna make straight motor plates with this cut out the top and be done with this. We're not overthinking this on the second go around. Now again, mine does have a spacer on the back side of this one just because the mounting tabs are actually um, on two different planes. So when you look down the motor, which is gonna be hard to see right here. Well, now I guess you can see off of this tube if you look at that one, 
okay, when that one is going out of picture and this one's still sticking way out. So that mounting point up there is actually farther out than that one. So you might run into a situation like that where you have to put a little space or a shim in there to kind of get the uh, motor plate the same. If you want to match it, you can match your motor plate to the same degrees using an angle finder that your mid plate's at. If you want to get real crazy and do it like that, that would be perfection and that would be perfect and amazing. Uh, but me, I just put a random shim in mine um, that looked to be about the same thickness whenever I eyeballed it. So the way mine ended up working out whenever I laid this on here, how did I do it? I had to, first off, I had to transfer it to the backside because of that that piece right there. But when I laid that on there, transferred the lines and re-added my uh, measurement. So I actually had to, since I couldn't see the reference point, I had to measure up to here, up to here, and add that onto the 4.5. And then that's what got my measurement. So when we lay it out, and we add it on, it hits down there. So we're just gonna leave that alone. We're not gonna cut that. There's no reason to make this cut, make this cut, and then we'd be too short uh, since this is easy. We're just gonna cut straight through here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a jigsaw, cut our top out, because I don't have a bandsaw and shape our top and then we'll get our bolt holes in it and we'll bolt it on and then wherever this ends up falling at that looks good wherever the tabs fall at wherever i want to put it at uh, we will then trim it up later but there's really no reason to trim it up now um, because it's not in our way i think we will have to probably notch some in the bottom because i think it fall it's going to hit just a little bit on that tube but there's no reason to go get crazy cutting the length right now so let's try to get this piece cut i guess all right so Got a new engine plate built, perfect. Worked out freaking perfect. I need to weld a spacer on the back of it so we don't have to continuously put these little spacers right here. This is just something I had that was close enough. Um, that way we don't have to continually do that every single time, but I'll have to cut some out of the other pieces. I think I'm gonna actually clean these up, repolish them, and then post these to like eBay um, for sale for Coyote engine plates with some pictures of how they were on my car probably since I'm remaking them to try to recoup some money. All right, so uh, I got this first uh, little tiny bar uh, just fitted up, uh, left long. Like I said, we're gonna do this same way. We're gonna sleeve this, or not sleeve it. We're not sleeving this one. We're actually just butt welding this one because then it's also gonna be welded to the hat itself. So there's no point in sleeving it in my opinion. Um, so we went and did this side first. We left this leg long. As you can see, I coped this side. This was actually my first leg, how it was supposed to be. And then I guess I accidentally got it a little too short. So fortunately I had this one sticking out to about here. So I just flipped it around and started on the other leg. And I figured, hey, I could, if I nail this leg, it's better. If not, I could go back to that one. So I'm pretty happy with, um, with how that is. I'm curious how this next side is gonna be because this is I bent this one at pretty much a 90 and it really shouldn't have been a 90 even though I thought it might needed to be a uh, 90. Um, but I kind of wanted it out and then to kind of look funky and come in because I want that tube rolled on the inside of the uh, shock tower, but I want these kind of split down the center. Uh, you know, because this is kind of welded to the backside. So for cosmetics, I just kind of want this tube just like this, where it kind of sits on the outside. Um, we're not gonna tack it in place or nothing because we might have to cheat this one around just a little bit uh, to make the other one flow up nicely. And also our joint may look a little funky on this one, um, but we shall see. Um, so let's get a piece uh, chunked in the bender. I guess we should try to find our angle just to attempt. Um, at least not to mess it up. The good thing is we're only cutting about, let's see here, what is what is that? Foot and a half pieces and I have quite a bit of stick. So we can afford to definitely mess this thing up a dozen times. But I'm happy with this side. By the time we roll beads all the way around there, uh, that will look good. And I'm also trying to be considerate of the engine coming up. It really don't have to um, come up too much at all. The goal is to kind of get it uh, up, you know, pressure off of it, walk it off the uh, transmission forward. And then we should be able to go up a little bit more and then come out, uh, come this way. And I'm hoping that by the time we reach the harmonic balancer pretty much to the front of here, that we will then be able to um, snake it out around the hats. Now we might have to switch and we might have to um, start using something different. Might have to weld some stuff to our engine lift plates. And we might have to use one of the crank bars that you can adjust the angle of the engine so that we pick it up, kind of adjust it like that, and then kind of 
pull it out like this. Now, in order to get our bend exactly where it needs to be, you got to make sure you cut a long enough piece of pipe so that just like on anything else or a tube, just like on anything else, you can move it to, to figure out exactly where your bend to be. Being I'm not doing this the correct way, I'm basically doing this with absolutely zero knowledge and just trial and error pretty much is how I'm doing literally every single thing. Uh, so far, I've only messed up on the two bars that we kinked. Besides that, I've messed up on no bars on this whole front end. I've allowed myself enough where I can walk my bends up and down. And like even on these, uh, they are close to symmetrical. I know these hats don't look the same, um, they're, but when they cut back, uh, when we cut these back, it should be the same. I stopped the weld, measured off of here, to where the weld stops the same on both sides so it's about three and a quarter where the weld stops so this one needs to be cut here and sloped up and then it should look pretty uh pretty symmetrical before we do that one though we will double check again <laughs> oh man uh we'll double check from here down to where our bar is and we'll double check from there and we'll make a mark and that's where we'll set the same bar uh, because we're duplicating this side to that side so this side is pretty much no measurements just wherever it falls figure it out and then duplicate uh, to this side. So what I have done is I basically took my tape measure and I bent it around with two hands and that put me to where I need about 11 inch bar, okay? And you roll it around, but uh, 11 inches is gonna be a little too short probably to safely get our benders. So we come in here and look at our dies and our dies are spaced nine inches apart so we could probably get it, but then that's putting the bin literally right in the center of the 11 inches and as you can see if our bend needs to be about right here the center then that means that's a seven inch leg right there so when they go a little longer to eight um so you really need to times that by two because you're gonna have to also have an eight inch leg this way um, in order to move your bend in the center so eight times two what is that 16 i think i'll double check that on the calculator um, i suck at math but you need to make sure that basically this leg that marks center so you got to times that by two so that when you bend it in the bender, uh, you're putting your bend in the center, then you can cut uh, cut back once you have the bend. Because once you cut that little leg up here on the top, this leg is probably going to be about two inches or so. You're not getting that back in the bender on here, on this style bender. So let's see here. Yeah, that little leg is probably going to be about two to three inches. Um, that's it. That's not going back in the bender. So once we cut that leg off... Um, that's all she wrote. She'll have to bend up another one. As far one. as my uh, cutting is how I went about like cutting like this right here out. It's literally this right here. I just cut a little at a time. So that was my first cut. And then I just started taking off stuff off the sides. Well, then it was these next. So that was the cut near the motor. And then I just started walking left to right a little bit. And then I kind of held the bar up there and I realized that I wanted it to go all the way to the tube. And so I cut off that long piece right there. Um, which was this front piece right here. So originally I didn't cut this front off. I was gonna have the tube the same way. The tube was gonna be on the outside of the metal and then it was gonna dive inside the hat and then back to the outside. But because of how this pretty much hits the center of this bar, that's when I realized that we, man, I can't win with that thing. That's when I pretty much realized that I needed to um, hit the bar in the center and I needed to cut the hat all the way back. I look up to the people that can bend these things up and do all of this in one hit because, uh, I, man, um, some of these things are complicated. So this one right here, I mean, it runs uphill. We've got it burned in around here. And then I was starting to come across attached to hats at the bar. And I was like, yo, we should probably chill out because my theory on getting the motor out should be perfectly fine. We've got plenty of room. But how about if we can't get it out? And then we have to cut the hats back more. Like, how about if we have to cut all the way up to here or something, even though I don't want to. The reason why I chose where I chose is because there's actually a spot weld right there that holds in the coal spring holder. Now, we don't need a coal spring holder. It's held in with, let's see here, where's the spot welds for it? I think, well, there's one there, two, there's there's three spot welds that hold in that coal hat. Um, we don't need that. We can actually drill that out. However, um, it's like a reinforced double bucket and that's what that spot weld is going to be actually not not the coal hat itself there's three pieces it's the coal hat which is down in here for the coal spring okay all right right there okay and then you can see the other two so there's one two three there's three layers to this hat uh we're going to get rid of the coal spring part of it and then keep the two layers on that but this spot weld right here and then there's a couple other ones 
and that one it holds together the two pieces from the factory so i don't want to hit them spot welds so i found the spot welds on both sides and then went and marked down below it we're going to go off that line right there and that's the reason why i'm running my bars where i'm running them uh is to keep the doubled up upper piece intact and not to uh not to weaken it so um it should work perfectly fine you know but we'll see time will tell so i said well let's just stop i said we can burn all that in whenever we get the motor uh the motor done fortunately it's like four o'clock i need to go to my uh or it's close to four o'clock i need to go to my parents house and do uh, christmas over there so i'm gonna have to pause on it and, and then, see what the overall um piece ended up looking like and then from underneath here you can see how uh, complicated that would be to bend it and get the ends coked and all of that um there's tons of people out there that can do it but i am not that talented at all so i just do it how i can do it